Good morning to you. I'm Matt Austin. Today on Flashpoint, I'm going to introduce you to two people who make it their life's work to serve others. They are the perfect guests as we all get ready for the holidays. I want you to meet Majors Ted and Pamela Morris of the Salvation Army. They are brand new to Orlando. You guys just got here over the summer, right? Late June we arrived. Uh -huh. Welcome. That is the worst time to get here. Oh, it's I'm just going to say time. that. It's great. It's great. It's getting cooler now. Too, now so. is the good time yeah, right. to be in Florida. And we're so glad to have you guys. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. We want to kind of start off the show here. A lot of people know the Salvation Army for the bell ringers mm -hmm. and the Angel Tree program mm -hmm. and all of the serving that you guys do to help people in the community but what a lot of people don't understand about the Salvation Army is you guys are a church and yes. you are the pastors right so can you sort of explain to us how it works Ted sure the Salvation Army is a church first of all mm -hmm. and everything that the people we know that we do is based upon our faith it's, it's a working out is a living out of the faith that we have and so as you said we're both pastor of the Salvation Army Church here in Orlando and and we have a congregation and some people think our congregation is only people that maybe have come to us for needs you know homeless people and stuff there's some of them but we have professional people that worship with us we have young families with small children teenagers and and so it's, it's a great small congregation that we have and and, and you guys work this together this we is do. not yes. like you're at home no, <laughs> no. no, 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 no. how many hours no. A week would you say you guys work, Pam? Um, well, Can you count I, that high? We actually did count. We're, we're working on it. We're running about 70 right now. All right. And if you say that, it's probably a conservative uh -huh. number, yeah. uh -huh. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know the Salvation Army has been around since the 1800s, yes. uh, right? And it's kind of worked in this capacity. Mm -hmm since then and your family has been in it from almost the beginning from, right from the very beginning i was doing some research on my great grandfather uh, george morris he was a teenager in a workhouse in victorian england and so wow. he was one of those children in the children's factory and when he was about 15 a blacksmith took him out of that situation and trained him and in his 20s he met the Salvation Army in our early days and he was sent as a missionary from England to the United States and he served as a missionary <laughs> in California and he actually started the work of the Salvation Army in Miami so I have to ask, was there pressure? You've got this long oh. lineage. It's not like you could say, hey, Dad, yeah, you know, yeah. I want to I do heavy metal. Well, you know. <laughs> you know, my, my dad, my parents were very careful about that because they said, listen, if the Lord calls you to this ministry, do it. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't call you to it, don't you dare. And both my brothers and I have been called to this ministry, and they're serving in different parts of the country as well. And uh, we felt the call individually to this, as has my wife. A and your wife, now, you weren't born into the bloodline of this, right? <laughs> you kind of came into <laughs> it. How, how has that been? I, I grew up in Michigan, and I promise you I never saw a Christmas bell or a kettle or anything about the Salvation Army um, until I was 21, and I moved to Texas for a job and we ended up working at the same location but uh, and then at that time I was looking for a home church because I had just moved and so I visited around and visited the Salvation Army as well. You found this handsome tall drink Walked of water in here. and yeah. said I'm home. <laughs> I'm home. Yeah. And you guys have three kids now. Mm -hmm. yes. How does that work? How do you approach it with your kids? Are, are they kind of headed in that direction? Well, or? we told them the same thing that my parents told me. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've chosen not to follow in those footsteps which is fine. Mm -hmm. They're church going young people which is great. Uh, yeah. Our eldest son is expecting his first child in January so it's our first grandchild we're waiting for and uh, so we're very pleased with them but we asked our daughter especially who's 19 we said to her you've moved around and lived in all different places I said what was that like for you as a kid was that a good thing or a bad thing and she said I have friends everywhere now because I lived in so many houses lived in so mm -hmm. many cities that I have friends all over the place mm -hmm. so that we were thankful that uh, there wasn't any resentment <laughs> and you were relieved around. at that point when she had that answer <laughs> right. well, what about for you guys because I, I know you have to move around a mm -hmm. ton and you don't really get to choose no. where you go no. At all. So, is this a tough life? Is it a sacrifice? There's moments where that are challenging, mm -hmm. but we're in our 11th appointment in 30 years. And uh, every time we've moved, even though we've not known maybe why we're moving to a certain place or maybe, you know, moving at that time, we've looked back and realized every single appointment we've had taught us something about ourselves and about our family and about our lives. We can look back and we can actually articulate what it is, how we grew from each of those appointments. Okay, so. uh, very interesting. Uh, tell me a little bit about the structure of the Army, Pamela, because it, it's people, I, I, you both are majors mm -hmm. uh, and, and there are different ranks. How does it work? Well, there's one international leader of the Salvation Army, and that would be our general, and he lives in uh, London. 
Um, then there are other um, leadership of different territories. We're in 127 countries all over the world, so the Salvation Army world is divided up into territories and zones. Um, but basically when an officer is commissioned, they're commissioned as a lieutenant. Mm -hmm. and they will have sort of a probationary a period. They will be a lieutenant for, for five years, mm -hmm. and then they'll become a captain, and then from a captain, they will become a major. And a lot of us, we will retire as majors. Um, there are higher ranks if you're promoted into, into upper leadership of you know lieutenant colonels, colonels, yeah. commissioners. Um, and you have to marry an, an officer, is that, is that the rule? Correct me yes. if I'm wrong. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so. So if you wanted a, a chance at this guy, you had to join the Salvation <laughs> Army, right? Is that how it works? But when we when but we were dating, actually, we yeah. talked about that. Oh yeah. yeah. And and we said, listen, uh, don't join this because of me, because I happen to be in this. I yeah. said, and we agreed that she needs to have her own unique calling for herself, and mm -hmm. she did, which we're mm -hmm. thankful for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as, how? Why does it work in the army structure? Is there is there a reason behind the different ranks? Well, um, every organization, every church has ranks. They yeah. call them something else. You know? It's kind of like uh, bishops it's, and priests. Exactly. And, right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And, it's and, just, and, and it's we're the titles. military structure because we're fighting a battle against sin, against poverty, against uh, human trafficking against alcoholism, addiction, um, prostitution. So that's why we have the uniform, that's why we have ranks, because we are a salvation army. Our, our mission is to bring people out of these, these terrible things in lives and bring them to a state of salvation. Not just spiritual salvation, that's a big part of it, mm -hmm. but also just you know, social, financial salvation. Social, emotional, social, exactly. financial, yeah. you know, to, to help a hurting world mm -hmm. in, in whatever way that, mm -hmm. it's, that it's broken. And, yeah. and you mentioned social issues. Yes. Uh, uh, that is a big thing it for is. people mm -hmm. these days mm -hmm. and a very divisive issue. Mm -hmm. How do you guys deal with that and navigate those walls? Well, from our very earliest days, we addressed human trafficking in England. Mm -hmm. And the prostitution age was very low. And because of work that our founders did, they raised the age of consent in England because of that through Parliament. So we've been involved in social issues from the beginning, and so we're, we're right now working very diligently around the world with human trafficking. Um, we believe in, in human rights, and we, we address social issues uh, very, very head on. And your organization as a whole is apolitical? Yes, correct? absolutely, yes. We have people yeah. that, that in our organization are in every party, and you can be in whatever party you want to and be in the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, just as far as churches go, mm -hmm. we've seen membership uh, across the country, mm -hmm. really across the world, in some places, Falling. Are, are yeah. you guys seeing that same thing in the Salvation Army? How are your numbers? I think internationally, I think we're growing. Our largest churches are in Africa oh, and Africa. India. Oh, really? And yes, that's Huge. the largest churches. Mm -hmm. and, and so in America, I think we're growing slowly. But like you said, the ch church is having some struggles. And so we're trying to find exactly the, the, the methodology of ministering to people. Because our mission remains the same. But the method that we preach to them and the method we serve them changes with, with the decades. And so yeah. we're trying to address mm -hmm. that as well. And, and I know your core pol beliefs mm -hmm. run alongside, say, maybe the Methodist church. Yes. Our, our founder, William Booth, was a Methodist. Okay. And so our beliefs are pretty much... Mm -hmm along the Methodist Church, although we're not Methodist, mm -hmm. but we follow the same basic Christian beliefs of any uh, evangelical Protestant denomination. But, but you guys certainly go about it a different way. Can mm -hmm. you kind of explain sort of what is different about the Salvation Army? Well, our faith drives what we do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some people have said, you know, we're the church with our sleeves rolled up or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when when we see a hurting world mm -hmm. we have to do something about it there is our faith drives us it's it's the love we have for people the love we have for for those around us whether we know you or not it, it's it's this love of god the salvation army has a slogan um, heart to god hand to man mm -hmm. so it's like that it's it's our faith drives us to love others yeah and, and you I, guys are around a lot of hurting people we that, are, that we has are. to be tough our, our founder well, the story goes saw some people living under the bridge in, in east london and he went home to his his elder son and said to his son he says do you know there's men living under the bridge and his son said yes dad they're always there and William Booth says, well, let's do something about it.
and we've been doing something about it for 150 years and 95 years here in Orlando. Yeah, you really have. Mm -hmm. And you've changed a lot of lives, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. One of the ways you do it is with the Red Kettle Drive. This mm -hmm. is what everybody knows that's about right. the Salvation yeah, Army. Right. They see the bell ringers. Tell us what you do, because a lot of people, you know, I always have my kids put mm -hmm. a little dollar in there, or whatever, but a lot of people don't know where the money goes. Mm -hmm. So how is it used? The Christmas Kettle Campaign is one of our major campaigns of fundraiser for our year. It, it, it funds us throughout the year. This year our goal is $333 thousand dollars which is a lot of quarters and nickels and dollars. Uh, yeah. you know? Who counts all that by the way? We have people in our place that count it even okay. as we speak. They're probably <laughs> counting now. Yeah, they do it all the time. Very dedicated volunteers. Yeah. But what's so meaningful to us, you mentioned teaching your children that, is to see a parent come to the kettle and the child says what's going on there? Mm -hmm. And the parent squats down and explains to them what we do and explains to them this money goes to help people and oftentimes we'll see small children open their purses and take out a little bit of their own money and put it in. We, we realize the message is being transferred to the youth and that really yeah. blesses our heart and and i have been to the salvation army here in orlando mm -hmm. i have seen all that you guys do three hundred thirty thousand dollars does not seem like it would cut it no, <laughs> there's no, a lot there's going we, on there uh, we have other ways of raising funds yeah. as well yeah we receive funds from foundations and we receive uh, money from the united way of, of central florida and mm -hmm. so that's a blessing as well also uh, we send letters to thousands of people in central florida asking for yeah. help financial help and that helps us as well but through a lot of different faithful people whether it's those who put money in the kettle or those who write us a check that's how we receive our support all right so we have uh, some more time here to okay. talk about all the things you guys do and it is going to be difficult to fit it all mm -hmm. in uh, but we'll do our best we're going to take a quick break when we come back we'll talk about the salvation army and what it's doing to serve you this holiday season and how we can help out i'm matt austin you're watching flashpoint on news six December News 6 and the Salvation Army team up to put on a holiday concert featuring the Florida Symphony Youth Orchestra. They are an incredible group of kids. You can hear all the talent that comes out of that band shell there. This year's concert set for December 5th at the Lake Eola band shell. Admission is free, but we do ask families make a donation or bring an unwrapped toy for the Salvation Army Angel Tree. In addition to News 6 and the Salvation Army, our partners for the sixth annual concert include Chick-fil-A and Publix. Welcome back to Flashpoint this morning. I'm Matt Austin here with us. Joining us, we have Majors Ted and Pamela Morris of the Salvation Army. The holiday concert is one of those things we love partnering with you guys oh, yes. for down at Lake Eola. What does an event like that uh, do for the Salvation Army? Well, first of all, it gets people in the Christmas spirit, doesn't it? It does, you know? certainly. <laughs> and then it also brings people together to, to help us, to support us. And the, the gifts that are brought are actually taken to our warehouse and they're used to actually supplement our Angel Tree toys that are given by many people in town. Yeah, and Angel Tree is another thing. It goes along with the bell ringers. Mm -hmm. uh, you see these Angel Trees set up. It's a Christmas tree with little cards hanging off of mm -hmm. it with children's names. Yep. Uh, we've been partnering, especially yes. Really hard this Christmas. Absolutely. We want to get thank you. 3,700 kids. Mm -hmm. We want to have presents under their tree. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk, Pamela. How mm -hmm. important is this program, and and what have you seen from it? It's vitally important. Yeah. Vitally important. Um, there are so many in our community who struggle, mm -hmm. and they may be putting food on their on the on the plate at the table, but extra gift for Christmas or Christmas gifts. It just seems a bit little too far out of their reach, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and so whether it's someone who's struggling in, in poverty um, or someone who's newly found themselves, I mean, sometimes we will have um, emergency applications because they did not even see something coming economically mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and someone will find themselves in, in need mm -hmm. uh, for, for this Christmas. So um, it's really it's vitally important we can't do it without the community support and help mm -hmm. and so every angel that is adopted and brought back we make sure that child gets that gift yeah. uh, and those gifts and uh, it's just 
we just deeply appreciate the community support. And there are a lot of kids who need these gifts. Yes. It's also good for the giver, though, it isn't is. it? Oh, I mean, absolutely. Isn't this like the perfect opportunity for a parent really to show is. their kids mm -hmm. how they should be around the holidays and absolutely. really the entire year? Exactly. Absolutely. And many parents will choose an angel the same age as their own child yes. and take the child and say, get, what would Shopping you together. want? Uh -huh. and let's get something mm -hmm. for someone else your age. Yeah. And so, so just a, kind of as a description, when people see these little cards on the trees that we're looking at right here, what will people see? Well, they'll see the name of a child, a okay. first name, mm -hmm. and it's a real child, and they'll have their clothing size, a shoe size, and maybe a clothing size, and then they'll have a wish list, and then a, a need list. And the parents have actually done that with us. We work with the parents, and they're, they're screened to, to do that. And then the person can adopt that car, take that angel, and buy for that little child. They bring the unwrapped gift back to the location from which they picked that angel up, and then we, our people, our volunteers, our elves, so to speak, will come pick up that gift, take it to our place, sort it out, make sure it gets in the right place. So when we distribute them, the parents come, we have volunteers that take that gift, bought for that child, and give to that parent. All right, and how are we doing this year? Are we on track? What are the numbers looking like? We feel we're on track right now. It's still early, yeah. but we think we're just over about 700 angels that have been adopted so far out of the 3,700. So we have mm -hmm. a long way to go, but I think yeah. we're moving forward okay. I All think. right, I we'll, hope we'll so. Let's, we'll keep you posted. So, okay, well, let's help with that. Uh, to pick up an angel, there are various locations you can check out. There's Mollet Millennia, Chick-fil-A restaurants, Wing House locations, Nick's Family Diner, and News 6 Studios right up front there in the lobby. Please, now don't wait to get involved. Pick up an angel today because we need you to return those gifts by December 12th. And if you don't return those gifts, which unfortunately a lot of people do, I heard the number last year around 800 people 800 picked up one year. of those cards and then didn't bring them back. So right. they had great intentions, mm -hmm. but then they didn't follow through, and that right. really leaves you guys with your hands tied, and right? It really does. And what we, we use the toys brought to the old concert, you know, and we yeah. use those kind of toys to, to help augment that. If, if we can't do that, then we've got to go out and buy toys ourselves, which mm -hmm. we, we enjoy doing, but the funding has to be there yeah. to provide toys because we want every child that's signed up to have a toy at Christmas time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we call those Forgotten Angels. Yes, we do. Right? Yes. And some of the cars will have the name Forgotten Angel on that, and that's because that gift will go to a child who maybe was not picked when someone picked their name. Yeah, and mm -hmm. on December 14th from 4 to 7 p.m., we're going to have a phone bank mm -hmm. for the Forgotten Angels to try to make up for that. Thank you. And I know it's a big rush at the last second. I've heard yes. the event when people come to pick up their gifts, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think it's, it happens at the, is it the mall at Millennia mm -hmm. that day? Um, they, they pick up, uh, you mean the, the families pick the, up their When the gifts? families come to yeah, pick up their gifts. There's another place we have. Oh, there's, a, there's a whole other place. Yeah. So yes. when they come to pick up, do you guys know in advance that they were forgotten or do you figure out on the spot? We figure out beforehand. Okay. So yeah, they, that we, we, that Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday night before. Uh, distribution on Wednesday, right? We so the day or two everything. before, you day figure out that there are forgotten angels, mm -hmm. and then what right. do you do? You have to run out and... Well, sometimes we're frantic. As we <laughs> I would imagine well. so. Yeah, we want to make sure there's something in that bag at that spot for that family. For that child, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every child. Wow. So, uh, so, and will we be able to make it up when that happens? Uh, you guys don't have any we'll forgotten do, ones at the end, I hope? We will do our best not to have no. any forgotten angels. Right. We want to make sure every child we has make something. Sure every child. One way or another. Okay, mm -hmm. and one great way to help uh, with Forgotten Angels and everything else, you can donate. You can go to the website, um, mm -hmm. and, and that is SalvationArmyOrlando.org, correct? Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. excellent. So, so you guys don't seem too stressed to me right now. We're going to enjoy, feeling good we're about enjoying this. Christmas. This is a fun time. The drill is pumping. <laughs> That's great. Are you yeah. sure? I'm I would, sure. Think, that would, I would yeah. think Christmas would be over, and but I would just There's moments, melt. But, yeah. but it's fun. It really is a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah it's, it goes back, Matt, to what we said, why we do what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really All right, and I'm sure awesome. you are relieved to get to January, though. <laughs> Sometimes. We do take some time. Yes, we do. You at least get a vacation <laughs> or go to a beach or something. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, uh, Majors Ted and Pamela Morris of the Salvation Army. They do a ton of great work, and thank you for joining us on Flashpoint. When we come back, I go with a University of Florida scientist who can actually catch lightning bolts. You'll see for yourself next on Flashpoint. Central Florida is the lightning capital of the world. There are more lightning strikes here than anywhere else. Did you know sometimes we can actually create lightning? If you drive through the tiny town of Star, over the train tracks, and make a left on Lightning Strike Road. So this is where the magic happens. Oh, uh, yeah. This is where the rockets are fired. You'll find an otherworldly contraption 
a six-barreled rocket launcher. People email us all the time asking us how they can do this in their backyard. They do not. They do, because <laughs> they want to do it to their neighbor. <laughs> but this launcher doesn't aim for bad guys or neighbors. Three, two, one, fire. Its target, lightning. Oh, yeah. And 50% of the time, these researchers from UF hit it. You tell it where to go. You tell it where to go. When to go there. Yeah. And then you study every aspect. We can make any measurements on it we want. Dr. Martin Eumann has been triggering lightning here on Camp Blanding Military Base for nearly 20 years. This place was built from scratch in, in uh, 1996. Scientists here at the International Center for Lightning Research use rockets attached to long spools this of is, wire. Uh, this is 32 gauge copper wrapped in Kevlar. To measure every aspect of a strike. Here's how it works. High-speed cameras catch a lightning strike. It funnels down these tubes through this braided wire into a steel box, then into the ground. A half-second lightning strike whoa, pumps 50 gigabytes of information through these fiber optic wires into this launch trailer. There's not like a kit you buy for this. No, 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 there's no kit. Yeah, go to Radio Shack. Ask her for the lightning initiation <laughs> kit. The information learned in these experiments has had a huge impact. Here we have a house here that we struck to test the lightning protection of the house. And lightning standards have been created for houses, planes, and oil pipelines. We do these There's things another. in millionths of a second frames. They've learned lightning emits x-rays. There it is. And through still pictures like this, scientists have learned the biology of a bolt. As for the future, the goals are straight out of a sci-fi movie. Maybe one day control thunderstorms, control lightning. One day so control thunderstorms? Sure. That, you think that's a possibility? Eventually, yeah. Like, eventually, like how many years down the road? Eventually we're going to control everything. Oh, I don't know, 30, 40? So if you thought catching lightning in a bottle was impossible, oh. here it happens 30 times a summer. Pretty unbelievable, right? Some people have asked if they can get lightning to strike where they want. Can't they harness the power and use it to power other things? Well, it turns out they already can. But lightning is a short burst of power. And if you harness it, you'll only be able to power about one 60-watt bulb for two weeks. It would take thousands of strikes to actually power a house. Who knew, right? Well, that is Flashpoint for this Sunday. My name's Matt Austin. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend and a happy Thanksgiving.